Boring Company and Neuralink have gone under the radar. There's so much attention ta on Tesla and to some extent SpaceX that people are missing some really game-changing things that are happening with the Boring Company with Neuralink. So Boring Company connected the Las Vegas Convention Center at Encore, which is a resort. You can see the hotel in the background. They're connecting to Westgate. They were initially just had tunnels under the, the Las Vegas Convention Center. They connected Resort World first. Now they've connected two other, uh, in the, they're getting close to connecting two other resorts and they're working on the entire Vegas Strip. This is massive. So, and what a lot of people missed, this is back in, April, of course, it's 420, April 20, 2022. Boring Company announced the funding round, and I feel like a lot of people missed the story of what's going on with Boring Company. I just want to cover this because I feel like this needs a refresh. People need a refresher. And even, I talked to Walter Isaacson on a Twitter, on a, a space, on what was then called Twitter, and he didn't think Boring Company was going to be a big deal. And I think Walter Isaacson missed the story too. And you're going to see it in what I'm about to show you. So number one, they raised $675 million. Uh, with you know a variety of of uh, venture capital sources, I think you know Mark Anderson's fund is in here. Peter Thiel's fund is in here. The PayPal mafia in general is in here. So they raised six point seven five million. Boring Company is now a six billion dollar company. This was back in April, right? Boring Company had a six billion dollar valuation. So Elon owns like I don't know eighty ninety percent of Boring Company. So you know this is a this is a growing trend, and I think this company, just to be clear. I think this company is going to be a $10 trillion company and maybe a $100 trillion company. I'm going to show you why in a minute. So this is the big part of the funding round that I think people missed. So up at the top, Roofrock is a next-generation tunnel boring machine designed to construct mega infrastructure products and projects in a matter of weeks instead of years and at a fraction of the cost. Let me read that again, okay? Construct mega infrastructure projects in a matter of weeks instead of years and at a fraction of the cost, okay? That is game-changing thinking right there. This is Elon Musk. This is what people miss. You know, people are used to Tesla. Now Tesla's growing fast, but not as fast as you wanted. What Boring Company is doing is absolutely insane. So the current iteration of Proofrock, called Proofrock 2, is designed to mine at up to one mile a week, which is 50 miles a year. Proofrock 3 is designed to be even faster with the medium-term goal of one-tenth of human walking speed, or seven miles a day. Now. Uh, Will from the Boring Revolution channel thinks that these numbers are impossible. Will is a big believer in the Boring Company, and even he thinks these numbers are impossible. I'm going to say I believe the Boring Company. So in the short term, if each proof rock mines at one mile per week, and the Boring Company produces one new proof rock machine per month, then the Boring Company will be introducing 600 miles per year of capacity. As a point of reference, Less than 20 miles of underground subway tunnel has been constructed in the United States in the last 20 years. What they are saying is they are going to 600x tunnel boring development in the United States. Like now. Like, it's happening now. Like, I just showed you a picture of two different tunnel boring machines. Right? There's, these are two different tunnel boring machines connecting two different resorts. They've got two. They're building one of these tunnel boring machines a month, roughly. So at the, end of, at the end of a year, you have 12, and they do 600 miles a year of capacity. That's with only 12. And then next year, you build 12 more. And then you get to the new one, the Proof Rock 3, which is, you know, the medium-term goal. This isn't even the long-term goal. The medium-term goal of seven miles a day. Seven miles a day is 50 miles a week. So you go from 50 miles a year to 50 miles a week. But I wanted to stress this. I think people are having trouble wrapping their heads around this. If they're able to get anywhere close to 50 miles a week, then mega infrastructure, forget mega infrastructure projects, you've got giga infrastructure projects coming. So an example of it, my, my favorite example of this that I think people think is batshit crazy, and maybe it is, is four tunnels from Los Angeles to Shanghai going up north through Alaska, through the Bering Strait, through Russia, and down through China into Shanghai. I know Russia's an issue. I know there's a lot of problems with it, but if you can tunnel 50 miles a, day, uh, a week and you can produce 12 machines a year and they'll probably ramp up production and produce more of them, it's about 24,000 total miles of tunnel. At $4 million a mile, you're talking about $100 billion and you've eliminated all, you've basically replaced all trans-Pacific air travel. Think if you've ever flown to Asia, I, I flew from New York to Tokyo, 13 hours, ended up being 13 and a half hours because we got diverted a little bit. Um, you've got weather issues, you've got turbulence, you've got all these issues. Now you're doing it in six hours in a boring company tunnel where there's no weather issues, there's no turbulence. 
you know, th there's no, you know, the safeties, airline, sa airline travel is already extremely safe, but all of a sudden you're even safer. There's no weather delays. It's, it's nuts. And then cargo. Think about all the cargo that's coming from China to the U.S., all the cargo that's transported. And you, you can imagine runs to, you know, a run after you get to, to the Asian continent, you would run a line over to Northern Europe. You run a line down to India. There's all kinds of potential for this to just be a total game changer. You run across North America, totally change cargo transportation. You're eliminating the use of diesel, of nasty diesel. You're eliminating pollution in the ocean. You're eliminating risk. You're eliminating weather problems. Huge changes. They're probably going to do Austin, Texas and San Antonio, Texas and a connection between Austin and San Antonio. They're probably, if I was, if I was boring company, I would do Orlando after Las Vegas because you would hit the two largest convention center cities in America. And that's going to win over a lot of people who come to conventions. I can see boring company having hundreds of thousands of miles of tunnel. And you know, this simplest way I would approach this problem, I would go to a city and say, Hey, listen, we want to build you a tunnel system. That's going to solve your traffic problems. We're going to do it at no cost to you. Zero cost, and we'll cut you in on 10% of the revenue. What city is going to say no to that? Imagine if you're Cleveland, and you say no to that, and they go to Cincinnati, and they do it in Cincinnati. And the people in Cleveland go visit Cincinnati, and they say, why the hell don't we have this here? Wait a minute, you said no to this? What kind of idiots are you? You know, you, you demonstrate a viable, uh, a viable plan, a viable system in one place, and everyone's going to want it. And you do it in Las Vegas and Orlando and Miami, places where people visit a lot. Everyone's going to want it in their city. Not just that the people are going to want it, but the government officials who go to these conventions are going to say, wait a minute, I don't care about my people, but you're going to shorten my commute by, you know, 75%. Uh, instead of commuting 30 minutes, I'm going to commute in seven minutes and it's going to cost me less money. I want this. That's what's going to do it. That's the game changer. Okay, so I'm going to move on really quick. Neuralink announced the funding round. This was uh, just a, like, this is in the past week. $280 million Series D round led by Founders Fund. That's Peter Thiel's fund. And uh, Scott Nolan works for, I'll show you Scott Nolan. Scott Nolan, partner in the Founders Fund. That's Peter Thiel's fund. Former engineer from SpaceX. Whenever you hear people saying, oh, Elon doesn't know what he's doing. He just hires good people. Well, why would a former SpaceX engineer be pumping money into Elon's companies? He's got Boring Company down there. He's got Neuralink down there. Um, why would a guy who's, who worked with Elon, worked for Elon, if he thought Elon was an idiot and didn't know what he was doing, why would he be you know, investing in Elon's other companies? Because people who worked with Elon realized Elon's really good at what he does. Peter Thiel, right? Peter Thiel, they were rivals. Peter Thiel ran Elon out of PayPal. But he knows a good investment when he sees one. So the team has been working for seven years. This is about Neuralink, which is the brain-machine interface. It's a chip that you, you take out about a quarter-sized chunk of skull. You put this chip in. You put these threads that go into the brain about three millimeters into the brain, roughly. Each thread has a whole bunch of um, electrodes on it that's able to send brain activity, able to read brain activity, able to s send information into the brain. The team has been working for seven years to make this possible, pulling off technical breakthroughs that feel like science fiction. The chance to work with world-class teams accelerating a positive future is why I'm an investor, and even in that category, Neuralink is special. Neuralink is a big deal. And Neuralink, I mean, you know, I just said I think Boring Company could be a $10 trillion company or $100 trillion company. Neuralink... You know, what's the total addressable market for Neuralink? You know, you, you hear this term total addressable market. The total addressable market for Neuralink is everyone. If you, if you get to the point where Neuralink really, like we've got our phones, right? If Neuralink takes our, basically means we don't even need to hold the phone in our hands anymore. And we have much better communication with the world through a Neuralink. And it's able to help improve our health and do a variety of other things. Uh, game changer. Well, there's, 8 billion people on the planet, there's 8 billion customers. And we upgrade our iPhones every two or three years. If you upgrade your Neuralink every three years and it costs $10,000, figure 100 million customers a year at $10,000 a year, you just get to insane numbers. And then they upgrade every three years. It's just, it's just nuts. So, and you know, Elon owns probably 80, 90% of Neuralink. So, and I want to mention this, by the way, one of the things that excites me the most about all this is that we're going to go to Mars. And one of the challenges of going to Mars is, I think the most charitable estimate of getting a million people to Mars is it's going to cost about a trillion dollars to get them there. Um, and it's about $200, million, $200 billion for the transporting the people. And this is my ballpark estimate. $200 billion for transporting the people at uh, $200,000 a person times a million people. I think you get $200 billion. 
and then you've got to get the stuff there for them. So call that another 800 billion. I just made that number up. You get to a trillion dollars. I don't think there's a government on the planet that's willing to fund that. There's one customer who will be willing to fund that, who's eager to fund that, and will have the money. Elon Musk. If Neuralink becomes a $10 trillion company and Elon owns 50% of it, there's $5 trillion. If Boring Company becomes a $10 trillion company and Elon owns half of it, there's another $5 trillion. He's got $10 trillion. If Tesla becomes a $10 trillion company, and I think Tesla becomes a $50 trillion company, yeah, there's another 5 or $10 trillion for Elon there. SpaceX becomes a multi-trillion dollar company. Starlink, Starlink is going to be a multi-trillion dollar company alone. Then Elon's going to be able to write the trillion dollar check himself. I think Elon is the customer for building, um, building out Mars. 